the last thing I just, we've gone through a lot of content today. Um, a lot of it is sort of uh, introductory and certainly things that we can delve into more in the new year um, with specific trainings on different parts of these, uh, of what we've talked about today. But for today, if I could just highlight five key takeaways for you for impact reporting success. They know your audiences and their needs. So who are your stakeholders? What are they interested in? What do they need from you? Okay, using your data, looking at your data and your observations to develop your impact stories. Picking the formats that are the most appropriate format for the audiences that you're reporting to. Regardless of the format, regardless of the audience, think about how you can use a storytelling approach to make your reporting more compelling, help people engage with the stories you're telling, and then using visuals strategically to help illustrate your impact and reinforce the story that you've got in your report. There we go. Just um, as we're all going to take off soon, just to say thank you very much and to Katie for her background work. It was wonderful. Thank you, Claire. Oh, thank you, Mark. Always a pleasure. Did you know that uh, GNN has this video, little project they're doing of taking videos of, or you, you take a video and Fatima Ali is putting together little videos for different groups? I did not. Fatima Ali, look that up. Thank you. Okay. Hello, it's Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. Hi. I'm just curious to know um, if the length of the report matters in reporting. Um, yeah, I think it. I think it does. I think it depends on your funder. Um, Mark commented earlier that uh, as a reader of reports, he likes succinct as the most succinct possible. Um, some some funders uh, are going to want to see more detail and and that sometimes uh, you'll find that um, for funder reporting that they will provide you with those guidance and um, the kind ones are very clear about the words limits like the word the number of words they want to see in each section so they'll say give me 250 words on the context uh, or uh, progress against, uh, you know, activities. Um, but I think what you need to do is to figure out the sweet spot, right, of providing enough information to tell your story effectively, but not trying, not making it so long that the point gets lost, right? So you want to be succinct enough that you're being clear, right, that your, your audience understands what they are supposed to take away what they're supposed to hear from the report um, and, and however many words or amount of information you need to provide to accomplish that. So I think it's always sort of treading, um, you know, the balance between those two things, right? Enough information, but not overwhelming and not, not, a, not so much that it's gonna be confusing or your point gets lost. That's really a, a very vague answer. So as I think it really depends a lot on the audience. Yeah. I would one thing to consider, Jimmy, this might be a place where you where it's really helpful to think about um, the role that the stakeholder plays um, and their level of connection to your project. So I would say there's probably um, if you've got grant money from a large institutional donor, um, it's probably someone's job to sit there and read your report, in which case they're getting paid to sit there. And if they spend two hours reading your report, that's fine. That's what they're, that's their job. That's what they're getting paid to do um, is a very different thing than when it's a committee of volunteers or it's an ind individual donor um, who's got their own full-time job and their own family, their own other responsibilities, right? So I think it really, uh, thinking about how the stakeholders, when they're going to be reviewing your, your information, how much time they likely have for that, and what it is you need from them, and sticking to the information you need to provide in order to accomplish uh, what you're hoping to get from that individual or from that group. It's a balance. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Couple of questions coming um, to me, but let me repeat them here. 
Uh, one is about how often do you do this throughout the project so that you're not just leaving things till the end. Um, is there any guidelines on that? Say you're doing a six month project, two year project, five year project. What kind of timeline do you report on? And the second one is how can you um, how can you work with other organizations doing similar things in your area or in your region even geographically uh, in order to combine uh, make sure in your communications you communicate that things aren't being duplicated and how can mm. you find the synergies between organizations and communicate that so those also, are questions i'll deal with the second part first i think that is a good argument for why you should consider those other organizations stakeholders that you should be reporting to um, because if you're, you know, if you have an interest then in being able to demonstrate that what you're doing is, um, is not just duplicating what someone else is doing, but rather is coordinating and working with these other activities to accomplish shared goals, then a great first step for that is to tell others what you're doing in hopes that they will then reciprocate and tell you what they're doing, right? So it's a great way to model the kinds of action that you're hoping to get from those other community partners, okay? So I think that's really important um, and, and being able to situate your work within the greater context of work that is happening. Very rarely are we gonna be the only people taking action in any particular place at any particular time, right? I would say that that process, that the answer to that question also starts long before you're thinking about your reporting and really starts with your needs assessment, right? So when you're developing your project, part of what you're going to be looking, you, you should be looking at is what is happening in this community? Who are the players? Who are the various stakeholders? Who's doing what, right? So that you're making sure that you're fitting in appropriately, right? And starting off the bat with not duplicating efforts. Okay, and then that carries on uh, throughout your reporting. I really like that. That's a great. That's a great question and great consideration. Um, the other, the other piece of the question was timelines and frequency. Timelines and frequency. Okay, so in the uh, project builder, sort of one of the things that I think is there in the M and E section is the is a piece around timeline. So who, what, when are you collecting data and when, and then how is that data going to be shared? So the reporting piece. So it really depends. So some funders will be very clear at the outset about how often they want to hear from you, whether it's quarterly, semi-annually, annually, kind of depends on the length of the project most likely. So make sure you're following the timelines that you've agreed to contractually. Um, I would say for other stakeholder audiences, I would look at the work, I would look more at the workflow um, of the program, and I would report to other stakeholders when there is information to report, okay? So however frequently you're collecting your data, um, you don't have to do a full set of reporting to stakeholders every time there's a collection of data for monitoring purposes, right? Primary means that the reason for data collection is for your own learn learning, right? And ensuring that you're progressing the way you as expected and that your theory of change is holding true. So you don't always have to do a reporting cycle just because you've collected data at that point. But I would say when you've collected data and there's a story to tell, then that's when you tell the story, okay? So what when it's relevant and you may say, do a round of data collection and there's a story to be told from that data that's going to be of interest to certain stakeholders, but probably not that engaging to other stakeholders, right? Um, so I, again, I think it depends. Well, don't you love all these really vague answers? <laughs> but yeah, it really, it depends. It depends on the project and it depends on who your stakeholders are. But focusing again, just keeping that word story in your mind. So thinking about what is the story and who wants to hear that story, okay? And that's a good way to determine whether it's time to, to do some reporting or not. Mm -hmm. Thank you, yeah. And if you're really pressed for time, I think there's a question here that says, is there a basic format irrespective of funders indicators? So if you've got a limited maybe time in your project to sit down and put all these different things together, is there a basic um, tool that you could use or set of tools that you could use just to get the 
key information. Yes. Um, so we are going to be circulating after today's training, um, uh, like a little template table that you can use to ask with some of these, all these guiding questions that have been part of today's presentation that you can use to ask those questions of yourself or of your team when you're looking at your data and thinking through who your stakeholders are. Um, and then you can use that to then, you know, basically that is gives you what your story is and then it's not a ton of work to take that and convert it into an article or a case study or a thank you letter to a donor or a formal report, right? So you're taking the same story and just packaging it differently depending on the stakeholder. Okay, so we are gonna be circulating that um, to you all um, that you can use if you find that helpful. Um, in terms of any sort of standard guidance around timelines, I think in terms of formal reporting around things, if your project is, I'd say less than two years, I would think about midline and endline. So like a midpoint and an endpoint, unless you're told otherwise. If the project is a multi-year project, like a three-year project or longer, um, then I would think about an annual reporting cycle for in terms of formal reporting. Um, but in between there, I would look at um, what are the, where is there a nice story arc? So where are the climax pieces in the story of your project? And think about how you can do some uh, less formal or um, less onerous, so less time consuming, but uh, reporting after at those key points in the story. Okay, so once you've uh, in, a pro, in a sort of standard project model, maybe once you've done the training and the, the participants are now putting what you've learned, they've learned into action, that's a great story arc right there. That's a great point to be like, we've come this far and now pff, the action's taking place. You might want to do a mini reporting cycle then. Um, when you start to see the impacts uh, of, of those changes happening. It could be that there's moments your project is connected to the harvest season. Harvest is a wonderful story, right? That's a great opportunity to do some reporting, okay? Um, the, the end of the school year, um, whatever sort of markers on the calendar are relevant to the work that you're doing and, and to your community. So you can think about those sort of standard project-based markers, but then other markers in the calendar year or in the life cycle of the project that make for a good storytelling moment. Thank you. Uh, and just wanted to say, of course, what also makes for a good storytelling moment is good data collection, which you can also do regularly. Yeah. Uh, so Naomi just requested that you, you uh, go back to that slide that has the project builder m and &E page on it, um, just so we can reference that um, along with what you're saying. If it's not too far back there. And then after that, Laurent has his hand up and, and uh, I believe we'll make a comment. So you'll be next, Laurent. Here we okay, are. Uh, question yeah, about sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm surrounded in a very uh, noisy environment but I will try to make it short. Uh, what I was saying is that uh, that's why it's important in our organization to have, um, when we are conceiving our project, to have a communication strategy, even uh, a small communication strategy that will help us to make sure that we have someone in the team that will be in charge of monitoring and evaluation. That means when he will be going in the field to check what we have been implementing, it's going to be a kind of reminder for the organization mm -hmm. to know that we need to report our result and assess how far we've been doing with uh, what we've been implementing. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it will allow the organization as well maybe to have a monthly uh, review of activities that will be a good way of us to have an eye on how far we've been doing regarding implementation and the use of the budget. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Uh, thank you, Katie. I wanted you to bring back this tool to answer one of the questions. How long should the reporting format be? That's why I requested that you bring back the tool that, that the, the, this particular tool that you are you're flashing and then emphasize the fact that activity photos are on the basis of the activity when you do it and how you've done it. But then monthly reports are always good such that when you're doing the biannual report, you're actually consolidating the information from the monthly or from the activity reports. And also many a times depends on the donor. At times the donors will want you to report these, all these levels as presented here in, 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 in this presentation that Claire just made. So I just wanted it to be referenced to as one tool that can guide your reporting at the various levels. <laughs> 